Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're well. Uh, Joe here from Zilla Cabs. In this video today, I want to just talk about a few options uh, that are available to you uh, when it comes to recording your guitar sound. So as I hope most of you are aware, our friends at Get Good Drums recently released a uh, plugin uh, that allows you to use Zilla Cabs in your computer. And the question we've had a lot is, um, how can I get my amplified guitar tone into the computer to use with, with the plugin, essentially? Um, so, this is something that I've been doing for uh, a number of years and there's a couple of different techniques that um, I think are worth just detailing here for capturing uh, your guitar tone um, and then being able to use that with the plugin. So you find me here today in the uh, little editing co corner, this is where I edit the videos and record the, record the sounds. Um, so this video is going to assume that you know a little bit about uh, audio recording. So this. There's a couple of things you're going to need to have already, basically. Um, you're going to need to have a computer with some recording software on it. This is usually called a, a DAW, a digital audio workstation. Um, you're going to need an audio interface and you're going to need an amplifier. So just quickly for anyone who um, isn't quite aware, um, an audio interface is, this is my one here. Um, it's essentially just a little bit of hardware, um, there's millions of types of these. All they do essentially is provide a way of putting an audio signal into your computer and getting an audio signal back out of your computer. So, um, yeah, as I say, there's millions of different types, all sorts of different qualities from different manufacturers. Um, this is my one. I chose this one because at the time I wanted to have plenty of inputs and it seemed reasonably priced for um, the features available at the time. But there are millions of options available to you and all we really need for today's video is just something with one input. So I'm going to talk about four different ways that we can get our guitar tone into the computer. Firstly, and most simply probably, is just using a guitar lead straight into our audio interface. So guitar, lead, audio interface and then using an amp sim on the computer um, and then feeding that into the, um, the GGD's Zilla Studio Cabs. The second method um, I want to explain is using an amplifier and if you've got an effects loop send on there we can try that and see how that sounds. The third method is using a little piece of equipment called a, a DI box and then taking a feed from this after your amplifier and feeding that into the computer. And the fourth method would be to use a load box. So connecting the amplifier to the load box and then feeding that into the computer. Now I'm not suggesting that you might have access to all these different bits of equipment, but um, there's a couple of different options here and we'll see how different they sound. Um, they will have subtle differences. And some of these can be quite inexpensive options and some of them can be a bit more sort of full featured, uh, high end sort of things. But um, yeah, I think it's worth just exploring these different options available to us. So with that being said, I thought today I would use our um, little Laney combo um, just as a relatively inexpensive amp, um, well really inexpensive for what it is, just to show that you can get, um, you don't have to like have boutique and vintage amps to, to do this um, and get great results. And also this amp has an effects loop and a speaker output jack, so um, yeah, it sort of ticks all the boxes for what we want to do today. Cool, so let's take a look at our first option here then. Um, I'm going to record this screen so you can see what I'm doing on the computer as well. This is really a simple way of recording your guitar and using the GGD plugin. So I'm just going to get a jack lead, instrument cable uh, for the guitar. I'm just going to pl plug that directly into input one here on my audio interface. Right, okay, so I've got the guitar plugged into the audio interface. Um, I'm using Logic Pro. Um, there's, there's a bunch of different software systems you can use, and I'm not going to go too much into those different sorts of things. Um, there'll be millions of videos on, on that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm using Logic, and in my channel one here, I have got the GGD plugin, Studio Cabs. And in front of that in the chain, I've got the um, Archetype Nolly plugin, which is um, Nolly's 
signature plugin with Neural DSP, and it's basically a bunch of amazing sounding amplifiers. But um, this will this will apply to whatever sort of amp sim you, you want to try and use. Um, they generally have an option. They generally have their own speaker cabs built into them. But if you go into the menus, they more more often than not have an option to disable the cabinet section. So let's let's do that on this uh, plugin here. So I'm going to turn the cab off. Go back to the head. Let's just turn the Zilla cab off as well. Let's get a bit more gain going. So you can hear that sounding like a... ...amp without speaker on it. Let's just turn the, the Zilla plug-in on. Select one of our favourites. My go-to on this plug-in is the H Heritage speaker in the basket weave cab. Um, I think it always sounds great. Uh, let's try it with the Neumann mic. And let's add a bit of room to that as well. It's always, always quite nice to play with, with the room sound on, I think, when you're jamming on your own, just to give it a bit of um, bit of width to it. Let's add a little bit of an overdrive pedal on in front. So a pretty cool guitar tone there, I mean I haven't fiddled around with that there, you could spend hours going into that and dialing it in the way you like obviously. But just to show you that that's a really great way of using an amp, an amp sim that you, you might already own. or um, And there's, there's millions of free ones out there actually as well, worth exploring. And even Logic has built in amps as well. Um, but yeah, that's a really cool way of um, using some stuff you might already have to feed into the, the Studio Clabs plugin. All right, so that's the most simple way, I think, of getting an amplified sound in your computer. Um, not having to use a real amplifier at all, just using software ones that are available to you in your computer. And um, there's, yeah, there's great options out there. and you can get some really cool sounds that way. So the next step from there for me would be to um, think, well, that's all well and good, but I've got an amplifier like playing through, and how do I get that into the computer? Which I think is sort of the, the question we're getting asked a bit. So the first thing I want to try is using an effects loop send. Now, not all amps have effects loops, but uh, a lot of amplifiers do these days, and a lot of the sort of the more popular models out there seem to have them. So let's go ahead and get that connected up. Now sometimes connecting the effects loop directly to an audio interface uh, can lead to some issues with hum. Um, this is quite a big topic to cover, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about that today, but there are ways of getting rid of that, of course. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to get us connected up in our most simple fashion here, just to keep things simple for the video. <clears throat> so, he says simple, wrestling with the lead. So again, straight into my first channel on the audio interface with the jack cable. And then... And then obviously you want to locate the um, effects send jack on your amplifier. Which is 
here. And yeah, we're pretty good. That's us connect it up now. So all I need to do is fire up the amp and plug a guitar into the front end of it. So using this technique, what we're going to be capturing is the preamp of the um, amp, the guitar amplifier. And we're sending that preamp directly into the computer. As I'm sure most of you will be aware, the effects loops uh, in an amplifier is situated after the preamp. So you've got your guitar cable goes into the front of the amp. Then the signal goes through the preamp section of the amplifier, which is where uh, the tone shape, most of the tone shaping happens and where we add gain stages, which as guitarists we like to put into overdrive so they, they clip and make us happy. Um, and then after that, we often get an effects loop send and return so we can um, use this point to add in delays and reverbs to our overdriven sound if we like. And then, so the effects loop goes out of the amplifier back in and then that goes into the power amp which makes the signal much, much larger and able to drive a speaker. So doing this technique, we are just taking the preamp section of the amplifier out of the amp into, we're just tapping off at the preamp into the, into the audio interface. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's have a listen to how, how this is sounding. So I've got a guitar sound here that I'm pretty happy with jamming with. Um, I'll just let you hear it on the room mic here, the mic, mic that I'm talking through. <laughs> Let's take a listen to how it's sounding with the effects loop sound into the interface. So. So already getting a great recorded guitar sound there, I think. Um, let's switch this over to my old favourite H Heritage. Show with the forty-one and a bit of room added on there. So hopefully you'll agree it sounds pretty cool there. Um, this isn't sort of the maybe ideal way you'd want to do a professional recording just using the, the preamp of your amplifier. But for for demoing things and just getting ideas down, I think it's a really good solution for um, saving you that the hassle of having to mic up your cab, uh, mic up your amplifier. Just tapping off that effect super send straight into the interface and adding a um, professionally mic'd up cab onto the end of that already is a really great solution I think for, for um, just, just getting your ideas down. So the next way, uh, next method I'd like to look at is using a DI signal from the speaker output of the amplifier. So this essentially will capture, capture the whole signal that the amplifier is creating from its power amp. For this method we need another little piece of equipment um, and that's called a DI box. Now there are millions of different types of DI boxes and they often do slightly different uh, jobs depending on their application. 
this is the one I'm using. Um, it was it was really cheap. Uh, I think it was about twenty five pounds. But I chose this one because it was capable of taking a speaker level signal. So um, the signal coming out of the speaker output on an amplifier is of uh, quite a high level, uh, more so than like a microphone signal or certainly an instrument signal directly out of a guitar. So uh, you need a, a um, so you need a DI box that's that's rated to take that sort of uh, level of signal. So what we've got here is an input. This comes from our speaker output on the amplifier. And then this is a, they call it input through on here, which um, means it comes in the input and the same signal that's going into the input comes straight back out of there at the same level. And then that can go into our speaker or our extension cab or whatever. And then on the other side, we've got the XLR output, which taps that signal off and allows us to take it into the audio interface. So hopefully that doesn't sound too complicated. Uh, maybe if I show you the setting up process, it'll become a little bit clearer. So to do this, we're going to need two speaker cables and an XLR. So I'm just going to connect out of our speaker output on the back of the amp. That's going to go to the input of the DI box. The input through, or the output I suppose, is going to go to our speaker, back to our speaker. So now this is still a full functioning amplifier. We've got the uh, uninterrupted signal going, but just going through the the DI box. But from the output of the DI box, I'm going to plug in this little XLR cable, and then plug that into channel one again of my audio interface. All right, so let's take a listen to how that's sounding. So that sounded awesome to me. Um, just sounds like a real full professional recording. You've got the whole aspect of, of the valve amp um, captured in its entirety. You're even with this getting the relationship of the power amp working against the speaker in the amplifier. Because um, it's a two way relationship that it sort of push and pulls or pushes and pulls off the um, the impedance fluctuating with the speak within the speaker. You're capturing all of that with this with this method, um, just with a simple, cheap and inexpensive piece of equipment. I think it's a really great option for getting a uh, professional sound and recording together. So of these four methods, uh, that's my favourite one. Um, and again, it's so easy to do, and you just need a simple DI box that can take a speaker level signal. I guess the downside with doing the, the DI method is that you do have to have your amplifier audible in the room next to you. So if you're in a space where you can't turn your amp up or or you don't have some headphones that can um, that you can listen to what you're recording along to, um, yeah, that can be a bit of a downside. But you can still get a decent tone with your amp sort of set fairly quiet, I guess. I mean, my amp's, this amp's not raw in here, and um, I think it sounds really cool. So, so this, the next method, the final method, um, overcomes that hurdle by using a load box. 
now again, like all these other options, there's there's loads of different styles of, of load box out there and different budgets. But there are becoming more increasingly um, budget friendly options for this. Um, today I'm using this uh, Two Notes Torpedo Reload. Now this is a bit of an all sing and all dancing load box. It does a bunch of other features, but all you need for your load box to be able to do for this uh, technique is to put a load on the on the amp so you, you can uh, have no speaker connected to the amplifier and then be able to take that uh, signal DI out of uh, the load box into the audio interface. So let's go ahead and set that up and see how it sounds. So I've got my speaker cable from the uh, speaker output on the amplifier. I'm going to plug that into the back of the uh, load box and on this one it's labelled uh, speaker in. Now, you want to get a load box that matches the impedance output of your amplifier. Um, and this load box says switch and variable impedance, and this amplifier has different impedances as well, so um, we're pretty safe here. But some amplifiers might only have one option for an output, so and some load boxes have, have a fixed um, impedance as well. So just something to bear in mind when you're doing this. Um, it's important that your amplifier has the right load connected to the end of it, otherwise you, you can damage the amplifier if, it's, um, if it hasn't got the correct load on it. But I've got the correct load here, so um, let's carry on connecting this. Um, so I've got the amplifier connected to the speaker input. The next step is to connect the load box output to the audio interface. So that's all connected up correctly, let's see how it's sounding. So again, getting some great sounds there, I think, for me personally. Um, and this is just set up for the kind of style of playing that I felt like doing today. Obviously, there's millions of different sounds available to you in the um, in the plug-in. A uh, bunch of different cabs and mics, uh, we've spoken about that before. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, Paul and I did a video where we uh, did our first reactions of checking out this, um, this plug-in, so um, I'll put a link to that in the description. Um, but yeah, this is a really good technique for if you're confined to um, not making any noise. So I've got a sound of a, a loud valve amp there, um, but just nothing in the room, just coming out of my headphones. Um, so yeah, a really great option for silent recording. So in short there, I just wanted to show you these techniques um, so that you can take your amplifier sound, and I'm sure we've all got... Um, guitar amps that we know and love and get that tone into the computer uh, so there's a bunch of different ways of doing that there for me my favorite's always been for some reason just using the DI box um, but again that does rely on having the luxury of being able to turn your amp up um, there's something about that relationship though of the amplifier with the speaker and cap capturing that and then having GGD's expertise of um, mic placement and um, microphone choices um, to apply to that sound it just gives me great results anyway but um, yeah a couple of different options to explore so thanks for watching guys um, I hope this video was helpful to you in some ways um, let me know how you're getting on with it in the comments uh, let me know which of these sounds you uh, preferred or if you thought about doing any of these before or if you've got any little techniques like this that um, you find useful for this kind of recording I'd, I'd love to hear about those too as ever if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel um, hit the bell icon for notifications so you get a little notification when we launch a new video and if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up um, it just makes a big difference to us uh, with our videos so um, thanks for watching guys and we'll see you again next time mm -hmm.